Hey, thanks, Jeff. Now, with the Idaho State softball team, it's really the tale of two different teams. During the regular season, the Bengals absolutely dominate, top to bottom in the big sky. But once the tournament starts, it's like they're an entirely different team and they really struggle. Well, on the first day of the tournament, Idaho State looked like their old selves. On day two, however, it was a different story. Idaho State and Weber State winner goes on to Saturday's Big Sky Tournament Championship game. Third inning, check out the defense from Haley Breakwell with the diving stop, gets the lead runner at third. One of the few bright spots for Idaho State in this ballgame later. Bases loaded, Sophie Slegel walks Kirsten Cuso for a run coming in, and it's Weber State 3-1 to one with the lead. And the Wildcats wouldn't be done from there. As Miley Brown singles down the line, that brings in another one. It's 4-1 to one Weber State. And the runs just keep coming in for the Wildcats. As Morgan Alaband, bloop single right up the middle. Another one comes in, 5-1 to one Weber State. They would go up 9-1 to one eventually in this game. So last chance, bottom of the fifth inning for Idaho State. It's Gabby Lopez. And she flies out to left field. Idaho State gets run ruled 9 to 1 the final in five innings. So as dark clouds come in, it's a dark time for Idaho State. On the brink of elimination, they have to beat Sacramento State first inning. Two on, not for long. Alexa Chittleton, a three-run home run, and the Hornets go out to a four to nothing lead in the first inning. That would be all for Ashlyn Ames. She lasts one-third of an inning. Just not a good day to be on the mound for Idaho State. Now Bailey Foster on the mound with the bases loaded. Haley Breakwell can't handle the ground ball. Gets the runner at third, but another one comes across. It's 5 nothing Hornets. Things looking pretty grim for Idaho State until the next inning. Time to get some runs. Gabby Lopez, beautiful bunt. Everybody is safe. That loads the bases with no outs. Haley Breakwell getting it done. A single to the right field gap. One run comes in. Bengals on the board 5-1. to one. They would not be done, however. It's Caitlin Marquez still bases loaded. Bloops a single down the left field line. That brings another win in. Idaho State would tie the ball game at 5. But then second inning. ISU down 3. Make it 2. Vicky Galasso. Moonshot off the scoreboard. Galasso brings Idaho State just a little bit closer. That would be her last hit as an Idaho State bagel. Not a good sign for ISU. Sixth inning now, one runner on, and Haley Breakwell lines out to the first baseman, Sasha Margolis, who tags first for the unassisted double play. And then bottom of the seventh inning, ISU still down. Dara Kohler flies out to the shortstop. Bengals season is done. They fall to Sac State, 10-6 to the final. We didn't pitch as well as the team we faced. We didn't hit as well as the teams we faced, and I didn't coach them as well as I got out coached. I let my team down, let the community down. Uh, not much more I can say than that. No, I, I you know, I think that uh, the season was a good season, but that um, it's hard to really look back on that being great when you don't go anywhere with it. So. So another disappointing end to the season for Idaho State, and a lot of people wondering just what is it about the Big Sky Tournament that causes ISU to fall apart? Now, with some quick research, I can confirm that no, Miller Ranch Stadium was not built on an ancient Native American burial ground, so maybe the Bengals aren't cursed. Just some bad luck coming their way. They'll have to wait till next year.